Welcome back to class. So we are looking at a second example with respect to our Bandmaster game. So we are looking at the market for saving deposits. What are the assumptions with respect to our setting? The idea is to collect liquidity from private households in form of a saving product. And afterwards, we want to sell the liquidity at the money market. Once more, we want to perform this kind of deal where we buy liquidity at a low rate and we want to sell liquidity at a high rate. Liquidity is supplied by the private households according to the following formula. Uh, the interest rate in the saving market is equal to 3 plus 0.1 times S, where PS symbolizes the interest rate, the price, which is set by the bank for the saving product, and S symbolizes the volume of saving deposits, the quantity. The formula indicates that, for example, if you want to buy one unit of saving deposits, you have to set an interest rate equal to 3.1%. In case that you want to have five units of saving deposits, you have to set the interest rate higher. The interest rate has to be equal to 3.5%. The interest rate in the money market is exogenous and constant, so the interest rate in the money market is equal to 5. The assignment questions are as follows. First one, solve the profit maximization problem formally. What is the optimal interest rate and how large is the volume of saving deposits? How large is the profit in the optimum? In the second step, you are asked to solve the profit maximization problem graphically and you should create a bank balance sheet at the beginning and at the end of the year. Furthermore, in a last step, you should cross-check your results by using the Excel solver. Let's start to set up the profit function. So the information for the saving market is given here. The interest rate in the money market is equal to 5. The profit function is defined as revenues minus cost. And the idea is to buy low, sell high, so that um, the costs are influenced from the saving market and uh, the revenues stem from the money market. The profit function is given as follows. Uh, price times quantity in the money market. This represents the revenues. And then we have to subtract the cost, which stem from the saving product. Let's plug in the information we have. We know that the interest rate in the money market is constant, equal to 5. And we can plug in the formula for the saving market for the price. Furthermore, we have to consider that the quantity sold in the money market is equal to the quantity gathered in the saving market. So we have to set M equal to S. Furthermore, we can get rid of these brackets here. So we multiply through by S and we get 5 times the quantity S because M is, has to be equal to S. And then we have minus 3 times s minus 0.1 s squared. Once more, the profit function is given here. Now we have to differentiate the profit function with respect to s. So we get 5, which stems from the revenue function, and then minus 3 minus 0.2 s. This has to be equal to 0. So the green part symbolizes the marginal revenues and the red part symbolizes marginal cost. So that once more, we have the profit maximization condition, marginal revenues are equal to marginal cost. Marginal revenues are equal to five and marginal costs are equal to three plus 0.2 S. We need this kind of information in the end 
for our graphical solution. But let's solve this relationship for S. So we put the 3 on the other hand side of the equation. We get 0.2 S is equal to 2. So that S is equal to 10. The optimal quantity is equal to 10. So the bank should buy 10 units in the saving market and should sell this 10 units in the money market. In order to get 10 units of savings, the interest rate has to be equal to 3 plus 0.1 times 10. The interest rate has to be set to 4% in the saving market. The profit is given by profit per unit is equal to 5 minus 4. 5 is received in the money market. 4 are the cost per unit. So 5 minus 4, this is a profit per unit. When we multiply through by 10, we get the profit, which is equal to 10. So the profit is equal to 10 cents. We have solved the profit maximization problem formally. Now let's have a look at the graph. This is the graphical solution, like the orange line indicates the marginal revenues which stem from the money market so this is the interest rate of five percent the yellow line indicates the uh, price function it starts at the level of three and when we go 10 steps to the right then the curve goes one step upwards so the slope of this yellow curve is equal to plus 0.1. The blue line indicates marginal cost. Also, the marginal cost start at the level of three, but they have two times the slope of the price function. So the curve, which symbolizes marginal cost, starts at three, but it has two times the slope of the yellow curve. So the blue line indicates the uh, marginal cost curve. It starts at three. And when we go 10 steps to the right, the curve goes two steps upwards. So the slope of the blue line is equal to 0.2. We have to look at to the, for the intersection where marginal revenues are equal to marginal cost. We have to check for the intersection of the blue line and the orange line. They intersect here in this point, so we find the optimal quantity in a first step on the horizontal axis. So S, the optimal quantity, is equal to 10. And when we insert the optimal quantity of S is equal to 10 into the price relationship, then we find on the yellow line the optimal price in the saving market is equal to 4. Let's switch to the balance sheet. Once more, you can see here a stylized balance sheet for the bank. On the left-hand side, where we have the asset side, we distinguish short-term and long-term assets. And on the liability side, we distinguish short-term liabilities, long-term liabilities, and equity. The overall formula uh, to make a profit is to buy low, sell high. So the asset should have a high interest rate, liability should have a low interest rate, and this secures that the profit, like the dividends for the equity, is high. The balance sheet at the beginning of the year looks at as follows. We have short-term liabilities, saving deposits at the interest rate of 4%, the size is equal to 10. And we are selling this saving deposits at the money market at a higher interest rate, at the interest rate of 5%. And we, you can also find here the so 10 units on the asset side. Like after one year, the balance sheet should look as follows. Like uh, we are gaining on the money market 50 cents in revenues. The saving deposits, they come with a cost of 
40 cents so that the profit is equal to 10 cents. You find the 10 cents here in the cash part and the equity increases by 10 cents. This is the expected balance sheet in one year from now. On the last slide, you can find the information for the Excel solver, like the different functions are given here. But I would like to switch to my Excel sheet in order to highlight how the Excel solver has to be set up so that we can maximize our profits. In a first step, it is the case that we are inserting a random number in the cell D5. So here we plugged in the two. And in the end, Excel should play around with the two so that the profit is maximized. In cell number D6, I type in the formula for the interest rate in the saving market, which is equal to equal sign 3 plus 0.1 times the quantity. So the formula has to be 3 plus 0.1 times D5. In the next step, I calculate the revenues. Revenues are given by 5 times the quantity, the interest rate in the money market times the quantity. So equal to 5 times D5 gives the revenues. The costs are given by the interest rate in the saving market times the quantity in the saving market. So D6 times D5, this gives the cost. Profit is defined as revenues minus cost. So D7 minus D8 gives us the profit. Right now, the profit is at 3.6, but this is not the optimal result. So in the end, we want to maximize profits and we know already that this should be equal to 10 in the end. So we have to find the Excel solver, which is given under the menu point Daten, data, and you find the solver here on the right side of this menu. So the objective is equal to the cell D9, because D9 includes the profit. We have to make the mark here at maximum. And the changeable cell is given by the cell D5. Excel should play around with the quantity so that in the end, the profit is at max. Now I press the solution button. And in the end, it is the case that the quantity should be equal to 10. The interest rate is equal to 4. Revenues are equal to 50, costs are equal to 40, and the profit is equal to 10. This is the end of this part of the lecture. Thank you very, very much for attending my lecture. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.